I give you my word, okay? If, if you wake up tomorrow and you have a blind eye of what we're talking about, that everything's in the middle of the range, I give you my word, you're going to chop yourself up. You're going to be one of the people talking about, this is such a choppy day. I'm telling you, it's going to be a choppy day. Every, everything in technology tomorrow is literally in the, in the middle of the range. The only way we'll get value in technology if stocks... Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So let's, let's talk about kind of what we are uh, faced with tomorrow. So if you kind of rewind back yesterday's video, um, we were looking for kind of a day two, right? A day two move. Uh, very, very aggressively. We were looking at that uh, possibility and we were really hoping for a red open or a flat open because again, there was a, a lot of value day two. And when you look at the Twitter feed today, it looks so good, right? It looks absolutely so good. NVIDIA, 506 needs to build, the damn thing went to 520, right? It looks great. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the, uh, I'll tell you the, uh, um, what happened, okay? Um, and why it's not a good thing. Uh, NVIDIA looked great. Alibaba looked great. Netflix looked great. Uh, Tesla looked great pre-market. Everything looked great. Like everything was ready to go. Everything looked great. And the problem was um, they started talking about the stimulus bill, the stimulus bill, the stimulus bill. And then everything exploded. Like literally everything exploded today uh, pre-market. And if you traded beta, you, you literally got shut out because every stock, although it looks great on paper, right? And the video goes from uh, 506 to 520, right? It looks absolutely great on paper. The problem is you had no shot of trading this thing. Uh, no shot because it started going printing 506, 509, 512, 517, absolutely all pre-market. And it, when you look at the whole group, and I was looking at a really good potential, really good high probability trade today uh, into supply, the whole average true range of the day literally got put in within the first 10, literally from about nine o'clock in the morning pre-market till about the open. So everything was gone. Like literally everything was gone. Stocks were putting in $20, $30 moves, uh, even, even Tesla, right? Like I, I loved, the Tesla setup here pre-market. I go, hey, look, you know, watch that first push, 695, 693. It, it went to like 720 in seconds. Like there's no way, unless you were literally, you know, sitting there and pressing buttons as this news was coming out, there was absolutely no way you could have gotten these pivots, or at least if, if you did, congratulations, but we got completely shut out. And the worst part of it is what I expected to happen for the whole day today for my plan for the whole section, it happened in 10 minutes. So we got shut out really, well, at least I did. I got shut out very, very quickly, uh, not even at the open. And I was really, really, the word, the word they use the word perturbed, right? Um, you know, thank God for Zen Dan, right? I was taking deep breaths. So literally the, the window closed on beta very, very quickly. And to, to kind of make things worse for a lot of traders, they didn't even, even realize where they were buying stocks at that open, at those levels because they literally opened right at the 10 day supply and they got pulled right away. I mean, if you look at the pulls today on Tesla, I mean, they all look the same, but you can see it. They all got rejected. They all opened that supply and you had moves like this, right? You had moves like this, just destruction. You had moves like Amazon opened up that supply, got destroyed and N NVIDIA opened up that supply, got destroyed. Netflix that so close to came to breaking out, right? Went from 519 to 500, destroyed. So it's so important, guys. We always talk about uh, levels every single day, especially on the nightly video. When you're putting on trades or, or you're going into the next day, there shouldn't be any surprises, right? If you're looking to buy stocks, you have to, uh, you have to understand where your macro uh, grenade launchers are pointing at you. If you don't, I mean, look, just ask anybody literally who bought stock today pre-market or literally out the open, what happened? They just got absolutely destroyed. Here's the good news, bad news, right? 
market continues to be very, very strong. The Dow, again, just busting out all over the place. Um, you know, names like Boeing uh, had a huge move, continue to have a huge move, had some news today uh, after the close. Names like Triple M, names like Caterpillar, right? They all look good. They all look great. I don't care about Caterpillar. I don't care about Triple M. I'm not trading McDonald's tomorrow, right? I'm not trading McDonald's tomorrow, okay? So that's the bad news. When you look at rejections on every single level today on the NASDAQ 100, the good news, bad news is very simple, right? We got rejected at supply, which is not horrible, but the good news is we held 90% of yesterday's gains. That's the good news, right? So structurally, if you believe that today was a rest day, and that's exactly what we potentially could have happened without that big run uh, into the open, that's a good thing, right? There's nothing structurally wrong in the market. And if you are going into tomorrow's session, you have to turn around and say, well, we did get rejected. That's not good, right? We're still below the 50-day moving average. That's not a good thing. We, we, we've talked about yesterday, even though with the, one of the biggest rallies we saw yesterday in technology, we knew we're not out of the woods. We get that part, right? The good news is we did hold the 10-day moving average. Got rejected here, but held the 10-day. So that's good. Here's the problem. When you look at every single chart going into tomorrow's session, you'll wind up looking at the same thing. Apple is in the middle of the range. Tesla is in the middle of its range. Netflix, right? Netflix. America. Netflix got rejected, right? It's not the top of the range, it's not the bottom range. Guess where it is, right? It's at the middle of the range. Apple, you could go literally through every single stock in the NASDAQ 100 and you'll see exactly the same thing. So that's the problem, okay? Our issue tomorrow is technology. If you're trading technology, I, I give you my word, okay? If, if you wake up tomorrow and you have a blind eye of what we're talking about, that everything's in the middle of the range, I give you my word, you're gonna chop yourself up. You're gonna be one of the people talking about, this is such a choppy day. I'm telling you, it's gonna be a choppy day. Every, everything in technology tomorrow is literally in the, in the middle of the range. The only way we'll get value in technology if stocks start breaking down below their bottom ranges, and if they do start breaking down below their bottom ranges, then it, that's probably gonna happen in the afternoon. Because remember, everybody's still on that whole euphoric cycle from, from yesterday, the day before, that they, they remember everything right up 100 points, right? They get that part. So there will be early dip buying. So the idea that you could turn around and say, I'm gonna assume the market's gonna roll over and we're gonna go back to, to the lows, that's very premature and it's a very, very dangerous way uh, to navigating the market. Don't guess, right? We, we say this all the time, don't guess. So we have that good news, bad news scenario. We know technology for the most part probably is going to be uh, off the table for tomorrow's session. So we have to do kind of what we did today. We kind of have to manufacture runs. Uh, the PLTRs of the world, the RKTs of the world, right? Mo all, all, all my trades today were bounce plays. Like literally, they were all bounce plays. I let them all take out highs. They came back into the 60-minute channel and they bounced. Even a name like uh, GNUS of all things, right? Uh, you know, a stock like this had you know all this order flow came in today. Uh, they came for the three, the 350, the four dollars short-term expiration. We caught the dip. You know, we sold some in the 30s. Blah 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 blah. So I think tomorrow we're gonna have to be very very creative. And you know, just again to borrow. Uh, terminology from the baseball world, yeah, you're gonna have to manufacture runs tomorrow. You're gonna have to figure out how to put stakes in the freezer because I, I give you my word, you're not gonna get that majestic move in Amazon. The only way you get it if, it if it starts taking down bottom channels. You're not gonna get that big move one way or another tomorrow on Tesla because again, everything's in the middle of the ranges. So if you are a, especially a new trader tomorrow, again, these, these are not you know, cryptic, you know, crypt, cryptic codes to go all in tomorrow. I'm telling you, you're going to get chopped up. So tomorrow you're going to be, have to be really, really patient. Um, I think the value tomorrow is going to be names that I probably wouldn't trade uh, on a normal, uh, maybe on a normal day. But look at like a trade, like, like a stock like BIIB, right? It's held this bottom range here three times. Maybe if it starts breaking down tomorrow, who knows? Maybe there's a trade there. Maybe a Taiwan semiconductor, right? A name that, again, I probably wouldn't trade ever, okay? But again, going into tomorrow's session, beggars can't be choosers. If it's, you know, it held three times as bottom range, if it starts breaking down, hey, who knows? Maybe we can catch lightning in a bottle there. Uh, even a name like uh, MAC to the long side, right? It's gotten rejected three times uh, off the upper channel here. You saw some uh, short-term 
uh, out of the money calls coming in the 15th, the 16th, the 17th. You know, if this thing maybe starts getting above this channel here, maybe it starts waking up. Maybe maybe it starts going higher. Again, we we don't know. So I definitely do not have any expectations for tomorrow. I, I will 100% give you my word. I'm not trading Triple M. I'm not trading Procter & Gamble. I'm not trading uh, McDonald's or, or anything in between. I'm, you know, these are investment vehicles. I don't care how good they look. I'm not going to sit there and fight for a Triple M for 40 cents for six hours. It's just, it's just complete waste of time. So I think tomorrow your aggression level should definitely be uh, tempered 100%. Your tier side 100% should be tempered tomorrow. If we get something that pops out of nowhere that we had an alert set for for two, three weeks ago, and it starts, you know, really triggering, hey, of course, God, you know, Godspeed. But going into tomorrow's session, look at it more as a digestion day. Maybe the, the market really needs maybe another day to kind of go sideways. And that sideways action is structural. Because remember, if they can't take down the market tomorrow again, they tried, right? But if they can't take down the market again tomorrow, that means it's just one more day that the sellers are comfortable at these levels. So eventually, if we can get into Friday's session and they don't give back any gains, right? They, they literally don't give back any gains and they hold above the 10 day moving average for a second day. Now, we're, then we're starting to look at this upper channel here at that 17 level where it got rejected uh, this morning at the open. And now that 50 day moving average going into the, the, to the next day or, or going into next week will become a viable now, right? A viable target that the bulls can reclaim and start seizing bullish control back uh, to the upside. So be very, very careful tomorrow's session. Um, you know, don't let that FOMO bug continue to bite you. It's remember, guys, it's all about longevity. You don't need to trade every single day, right? You know, if we get something tomorrow, we get something tomorrow. If there's any surprises, that's great. But I have no expectations for tomorrow. Uh, if you go through your charts, and I, you know, I really, really encourage everybody uh, to go through your charts. You know, go through the Nasdaq 100. Go through, uh, you know, go through charts. I see what kind of a mess it is, and if you find some good value. Hey, hold on to it like grim death. So uh, just to remind you guys, Thursday nights, um, I usually take off. I usually don't record a video uh, Thursday nights. It's kind of like my maintenance day uh, for the week. Because again, you know, I, I speak for seven hours a day, um, trading all day, answering all, all that good stuff. So by the time Thursday night rolls around, my head is fried. I have like literally zero battery power left. So I'd rather be fresh for Friday session than to be completely wiped out. Uh, into uh, the morning session. So that's it, guys. We're kind of set up for tomorrow uh, in a stagnant situation. I expect the ranges to contract. If we get a surprise, both uh, upside or downside tomorrow, I'm ready for both sides. Uh, again, who knows? Maybe we could get pleasantly surprised uh, and get some good value. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I will see you all tomorrow.